This is a Peer J video abstract with Karen Woolley. My name is Dr. Karen Woolley, and I lead an international division of publication professionals at the Envision Pharma Group. And I'm also an adjunct professor at two Australian universities, the University of Queensland and the University of the Sunshine Coast. Well, I'm presenting this video abstract on behalf of my co-authors, Dr. Carey and Dr. Stretton, who work with me at Envision Pharma Group in the Asia-Pacific region, as well as our co-authors, Dr. Kenray and Dr. Wagner, who work for Envision in the US. Our research team investigated, for the first time, the publication rate of research conducted by publication professionals. We were interested in finding out how well were publication professionals contributing to the evidence base for the most effective and ethical way to publish medical research results. Publication professionals are relatively new members of medical research teams, and they are the experts in compliance of reporting and communication. And each year, publication professionals help thousands of authors around the world to report medical research results in a complete, timely, and ethical manner. Well, this was the first study to investigate the publication rate by publication professionals on publication practices. And what we found was both good and bad. Now, the bad news first, the publication rate was extremely low. Only 2.4% of the research presented by publication professionals at their major meeting was eventually published as a full paper in a peer-reviewed journal. That publication rate is 25-fold worse than the publication rate that's been reported for research presented by the medical research community and medical journal editors. The good news of sorts is that we now know how bad the situation is. We now know that we have to do much better and perhaps quantifying this research publication rate for the first time will serve as a catalyst for publication professionals to improve their publication of research on publication practices. To do this study, we used the same approach that had been used by Professor Marisic, who looked at the publication rate of research conducted by medical journal editors and peer reviewers. They examined the publication rate of research that was presented as research abstracts at the peer review congress. We examined the publication rate of research abstracts that were presented at the annual meetings of the International Society for Medical Publication Professionals, the largest society meeting for publication professionals. Now, Professor Marisic and her colleagues reported somewhat disturbingly that 39% of the research abstracts presented at peer review congresses were never published as full papers. And she issued a warning to medical journal editors and peer reviewers that this publication rate was not acceptable and she highlighted the problems with limited research and limited funding. And we think the same message and challenge can be provided to publication professionals. And I think we can take a lesson from the work that Dr. Roberta Scherer did from Johns Hopkins, where she studied what the most common and most important barriers to publication are. I'm Roberta Scherer, and I'm a senior scientist at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Lack of time by far was the most prevalent reason, it was the most common reason that was reported. It's important to do these types of research studies on publication practices because they really help us understand how well or not we're contributing to the evidence base for the best way to publish medical research results. In our study, we found that most of the research conducted by publication professionals was observational or opinion-based. We need to see more interventional, prospective research. Patient care depends on complete, timely, an ethical reporting of medical research. And really, we have to do a better job of publishing this type of research. The research community needs to step up and publication professionals need to be part of that. We all need to contribute to the evidence base for the best way to publish medical research. If we don't contribute to that evidence base, 
then we're going to have to rely on expert opinion and that's just not good enough. We should do better and we can do better.